Over these next three episodes, we're creating both the gameplay and the cutscenes for the cinematic Death at Sea. And this is what we'll have by the end of next episode. Hey guys, welcome to today's episode, and I am really excited about this upcoming series of episodes. It's today's episode and then four more, but we're finally getting into cinematics. And I keep saying this throughout the series, but it's true, I have zero experience with cinematics. Zilch. Nothing. Nada. But here's the thing, I've seen a lot of great film over the years, and I've seen a lot of great shows over the years, and I'm hoping we can figure out the techniques to emulate the masters. Now, if you've been following this series, you heard me say in a previous episode, the ocean that we created for this new level is going to be a kill zone, meaning if our player character or an AI character strays too far into the ocean, then something's gonna reach out of the ocean, grab that character, and pull them into the depths. And that's something, well, I wanted it to be a sea monster, or at least the illusion of a sea monster. Because that's the thing in cinematics, you never need to show the entire thing, right? You just need to show whatever's evident, whatever's visible on the screen. And so to do that, we needed at least a tentacle. I wanted a giant sea monster tentacle that would reach out, grab our character. And for that, I realized I definitely need my friend, Ricardo Chavez. So the tentacle and animations that we're going to use this episode and the subsequent episodes, all that comes free to you from Ricardo. All the sculpting, the texturing, the rigging in Maya, and even the animations via Control Rig and Unreal Engine itself. And he's available for hire, so if you need someone who's excellent at ZBrush, Substance Painter, Maya, Unreal Engine, Control Rig, he's your guy. And you can find a link to his demo reel and his other work in the description below. And to start this episode, obviously you're going to need the tentacle in the folder. It's about 250 megabytes. You can find a link to it in the description below. Just download that folder and follow along with the instructions that we're going to go over in just a bit. So here are the key concepts for today. And for this first episode of the mini series that's coming up, I figured it's prudent to go through the process of building a state machine and really the full animation blueprint from the ground up. And that's then going to set us up to do all the heavy blueprint logic, like all the foundational structure of what we want to film. We're going to do that next episode. In this episode, even though it's short, it has most of the little hacks and the tips and tricks that I've figured out with animations over the years, how to make animations unique without actually having to reanimate something. And I'm excited to show you that. So let's get to it. All right, so we're going to start today by bringing in the files that you need for the tentacle. And just want to say before we do this, make sure to back up your projects. I would do this at the end or the start of every episode if you're following along with this series. And that's what I do. At the end of every episode, I back it up. And that way, when inevitably I mess something up or Unreal Engine crashes, the worst case scenario, I'm only an episode out of date. I can go right back to the previous version. So when you download the tentacle files that are linked in the description below, then you'll get this folder tentacle here. And this folder is roughly about 90 megabytes. It's not too big. And what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to find your Unreal Projects folder. So mine's stored under Documents, but it might be a different location for you. And we're going to put this into under the POC Rehearsal, whatever your project is, and specifically the Content folder. Here's an important thing. Make sure to move the tentacle directly into the Content folder. Don't move it into any subfolder. Put it right into Content, because if you don't put it into Content, it's not going to work. So just like that, drag and drop into Content. And the other thing is don't rename the folder. If you want to rename the folder, start up Unreal Engine, make sure everything's integrated, everything's working properly, and then you can move stuff around and rename it. So let's do that now. I'm going to minimize both of these. We're going to open up Unreal Engine. So once you're in Unreal Engine, let's go to our content drawer. And over in content, we should now have a tentacle folder. And the very first thing to do is open up the skeleton. Because if the skeleton loads, you know you're all set with everything else. So I'll open that up. Yeah, so if it loads and it's red, it's got all of that. If you click each joint and they're showing up, great. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to close out of this, back to our content drawer, back to content. And what we're going to do is take that tentacle folder. I'm just going to drag it over to characters and say move here. So then we can go into characters, back to tentacle, open up the skeleton one more time, because what we have to do is we have to add a socket. So if you come down here, down to joint 65, so this is going to be the location at which the character is actually grabbed. So if you're getting really close to it, so what we're going to do is right click on joint 65 and say add socket. And I'm just going to hit W to switch over to translation mode. You can also select it up here. And we're going to move that socket out a little bit away from the tentacle. So right about here. And you want to make sure to move it out on the cup side of the tentacle because obviously the suction cups, they're what are going to grab the character. 
And one other thing, once you move it out a little bit, so also move it a little bit to the right. So zoom over here to the right and move it right about there. And the reason for that is if we snap to that location, like if we snap to the socket, then that's gonna be the base of our capsule component, which is a little bit lower than the tentacle. Like we want the tentacle to grab the character either chest or waist level. All right, once we got that, we could save off our skeleton. And so before we create any of the animation stuff, the first thing we're gonna create is a brand new blueprint for our tentacle, character blueprint. So we'll select our content drawer and we're gonna right click anywhere in the tentacle folder, create a new blueprint class. And our base class is gonna be pawn. It is gonna be a character, but it's kind of a unique character. So we're just gonna set our base class to be pawn. And we're gonna name this BP underscore tentacle. And we'll go into that. And our pawn, the very first thing is it's gonna have a skeletal mesh. So we'll go to add and we'll search for a skeletal mesh, skeletal mesh here. And we'll name this the tentacle mesh. And I'm gonna move this up to our default scene root here because it's gonna be our root component. So we'll compile and save this. And there's more we're gonna to have to do here this episode, obviously, but we're gonna come back to it because first, what I wanna do is set up anim notifies on our actual animations. So we'll go back to the content drawer and we'll see our tentacle grab one and tentacle grab two anim sequences. So let's open up the first one, tentacle grab one. And if you zoom out and you got to adjust the uh, camera speed here because you can see just how giant this tentacle is. It's absolutely massive, but I'm going to pause it down here. So we're going to add two Anim Notifies. We're going to add our first one at frame 23. So if we move this to 23 and what you want to look for, and let me actually make my camera a little bit less sensitive here. So you want to look for the point where the tentacle is just going to zoom around our character just like this. So right about there, it's going to hook our character. So right about there actually, 23. So we can right click under notifies here and just say add notify. We're gonna do a new notify. We're gonna call it grab character. And this is gonna to communicate to the character to be grabbed. And then we're gonna move this to frame 39. Right around frame 39 is where we're gonna start retracting the tentacle. And so we're gonna add a second add of notify there, add notify. This one is less important to precisely get, but you want it around this time frame. And we're gonna call it fade out. The last thing I'm gonna do here is this tentacle, it moves really fast. So I'm just gonna slow down the rate a little bit. And you could play with this, but I'm gonna set it to be 0.2. And that's under asset details rate scale here. So now let's open up the second animation, tentacle grab two. So that's should be open here and that one the first frame is going to be at frame 34 so at frame 34 that's when it's grabbing so I'll right click on notifies add notify new notify and once again grab character make sure this matches precisely what you did on the first one and then move this to frame 50 we're going to do the same kind of thing so right click add notify new notify fade out in this one as well so rate scale 0.2 keep that save that so next we have to create an animation blueprint for our BP tentacle and I'm gonna show you a couple of tricks of how to get more animations out of just these two animations. And we're going to end up blending those animations together via a state machine in our animation blueprint that we're about to start. And one of the main reasons that we're using an animation blueprint is this way we can use anim notifies. This way we can actually trigger something at a specific point in the animation where we want something else to happen. So we can close out of our tentacle grab two anim sequence. Let's go back to our content drawer. So right click on the skeletal mesh and we're gonna say create a new anim blueprint. And I'm just gonna title this ABP tentacle. And so we'll go into that. So on our anim graph here, we're just gonna right click an empty space and search for state machine and we'll select state machine brand new state machine. And I'm gonna name this state machine very simply, grabbing, and connect this up here. Compile and save this. It says, warning, entry node grabbing is not connected to state, so there's nothing going on in grabbing. So let's set up some grabbing. So we'll go into that. So from entry here, we're gonna set up a new state, add state, and we'll call that idle tentacle. But the problem is, and you might have already noticed this, so in our content drawer, we don't have an idle animation. So we're gonna create one right now. And we're not gonna do a full idle animation where the tentacle's just kind of waving back and forth because really the tentacle, it's gonna be under the sea. It's gonna be hidden from our player. So all we really need for our idle animation is a single frame. So we don't even need to do any animation rekeying or editing. It's gonna be very simple. So let's duplicate our tentacle grab two anim sequence. You could actually duplicate either one, but I'm just gonna duplicate tentacle grab two. So right click and duplicate. And we're gonna call this tentacle idle anim sequence. And we'll go into that. So the way we're going to make an idle animation is really straightforward. We're gonna eliminate all these curves. So all these curves I edited after the fact just to get the grabbing exactly right. And if we eliminate all these curves, then we can go back to the very first frame, like back to here, it's gonna be a straight tentacle. And then we can create a new animation sequence from that single frame. And that's gonna be our idle sequence. So we'll select joint 32 here. We'll come down all the way to the bottom. 
And if you don't know how to rekey an animation, you're gonna learn that over these four episodes, but don't worry about it for now. So right click over here, we're gonna delete out these keys. Make sure you do this on the duplicate. Make sure you got tentacle idle, otherwise control Z to undo. So now it's just straight up in the air. We got our very first frame here. So what we can do is if we go to create asset, create animation, from the current pose. And we can save that right there in our tentacle folder. So I'm just gonna name it the tentacle idle pose, Adam sequence, and okay. And then you can play that and all it's doing is right up in the air. So we got our tentacle idle pose, Adam sequence. We can close out of this. We can go back into our animation blueprint into idle tentacle here. And from the content drawer, you can just drag that in. Tentacle idle pose, Adam sequence, and connect this up, compile and save. And the other thing is for this idle pose, I'm gonna set it to loop animation. So if we go back to grabbing here, so now what we gotta figure out is how do we move from being an idle tentacle to grabbing the character? And we have two different animations. So what we're gonna do for the tentacle is we're gonna have an integer variable that drives which animation to play. So we can set that integer to either one and it'll choose the first animation or two and it'll choose the second. If we set it back to zero, it'll go right back to idle. So we're gonna create a new variable under here and we're gonna call it animation to play and turn that into an integer integer. And once we got the variable, then we can drag in our two different animation sequences. So tentacle grab one, tentacle grab one atom sequence. I'm just going to title that tentacle grab one, and then we'll drag in our second one down here, tentacle grab two. So we'll move this over to the left a little bit, connect this up down here, go into our transition rule. We're going to take our animation to play and get, and if that is equal to two, then it's true, and then it will transition. So compile and save back to grabbing. So we got that one and we'll do the same thing for number one over here. So drag this over here, go into this one, drag in our animation to play. And if that is equal to one, then connect this up just like that. Compile and save this back to grabbing. And one thing I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna change the transitions to be a little bit longer. Change these both to be 0.5 duration and that's the transition from idle over to grab. So once you've got that, then the way you can test this out, like right here in the viewport, I'm just gonna compile and save, but right here in the viewport, I can actually make this a little bit bigger so we could watch it. So the animation to play here, we can just change the default from zero to one and then you're gonna see it actually do its thing. That's where it's gonna grab the character and then withdraw. So then we can set our animation to play to two to test that one out, compile and save again, and you should see the tentacle come down and do the second one. Now, one problem we have here is that the tentacle animation just stops about halfway withdrawn, right? So I thought about just pulling the tentacle back into the depths, and initially that's what I tried doing, but it just didn't look that realistic because the tentacle movement itself had stopped. So we want to keep the tentacle movement going a little bit past this last frame as it's being pulled back into the depths. It just looks better. So here's my animation hack one. So couldn't we just set the animation to play backwards, but not the entirety of the animation, right? So we don't need to get it back all the way to pointing straight up. We could just play it a little bit backwards such that it still has the hook and it's just kind of moving a little bit to the side and it's being pulled simultaneously into the depths because what's going to pull that tentacle into the depths is actually a timeline that moves it but we're not going to do that till next episode so here's what i'm going to do i'm going to take our two animations and we're going to duplicate these to play them backwards but the reason we're duplicating is so that we can trim them so that it's only a particular part of the animation that's playing so we'll right click on tentacle grab one and select duplicate and this one will be tentacle grab one reverse grab one reverse anim sequence and then we'll do the same thing for two so right click duplicate tentacle grab two reverse so I'll go into tentacle grab one reverse first reverse first yes so what we're going to do is we're going to keep the very last frame we're going to keep everything up to here because that's where it's going to blend from and it's going to play backwards but we're only going to keep it to about there because we want to make sure it's still hooking the character let me change my camera speed yeah so right about there so about frame 35 maybe a little bit less frame 34 so we'll right click on frame 34 and say remove frame 0 to frame 34 so the last thing we're going to do here is we're just going to change the rate here from 0 0.2 how do we play it in reverse it's just negative 0 0.2 and then when I hit play it starts from the back and moves its way forward now it looks like it's moving forward here but remember we're going to withdraw the tentacle back into the depths and that's going to be that timeline I mentioned so we'll save this and then we'll go into our tentacle grab two reverse so this one right here so same kind of thing we want to get it so it's right at the let's say first starting point of when the grabbing the curling occurs so right about there a little bit past that and then we can right click and say remove frame zero to frame 36 and we can also delete out here grab character and fade out so delete out both those atom notifies because this is going to be the reverse make this negative 0.2 
save this. And I forgot to do that on tentacle one reverse. So let's go back into that, delete out fade out here and grab character, save that. So we'll close out of this. We'll go back to our animation blueprint here. I'm also gonna change the default value here to zero, compile and save so it's back in the upright position. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna take these three nodes, move them out a little bit. Tentacle grab, tentacle grab two, move these out. Because what we're gonna do is drag in our tentacle grab one reverse. And actually, just to vary things up a little bit, our tentacle grab two is going to connect to tentacle grab one reverse and the tentacle grab one is gonna connect up to tentacle grab two reverse. And that way we have some randomization so it doesn't look like we're just repeating the same animation that we played to begin with. So you could do these very simple things with just a couple animations and give it a more subtle feel, like each animation feels unique. So I'm just gonna change the name of this one to be tentacle grab one reverse, and we're gonna do the same thing with two, tentacle grab two reverse right up here. All right, so now we gotta connect up the transitions. So this is gonna go here, this one's gonna go here. If we go into that, we can get time remaining. So time remaining, if I could spell, time remaining ratio. In that time remaining ratio is gonna be if it's less than 0.05, so less than 5% of the remaining time of the animation, then it's gonna transition. Compile and save this, and back over to grabbing. We're gonna do the same thing down here. So right click and search for time remaining, time remaining ratio, move that out. If it's less than 0.05, if you got that, compile and save. Everything should be compiling now. All right, so it's gonna start in idle, it's gonna play our grab animations, then it's gonna transition to both of these. They are already playing in reverse, and that was the negative 0.2 that we set. And the last thing is we gotta transition both of these back to idle, so we can connect these up just like this, Gonna do the same exact thing where if it's time remaining less than 0.05, time remaining ratio, connect this up right there over to the second one. Just make sure you're selecting ratio for all these. That's a common mistake that you choose the amount instead of the ratio. And 0.05 seconds might not be enough time to transition, whereas this is 5% of the animation, that's usually enough time. All right, back to grabbing. So our animation blueprint is complete and we can test this out. So the way to test it, just like we did before, we select animation to play, switch it over to one, see how it goes. And the last thing, I noticed this as I'm watching the animation. So we gotta set our transitions to be a little bit slower. So to go from here to the reverse, instead of 0 0.2, I'm gonna make this one second and this one as well, one second. And the same with the idle. Actually, this one, I'm gonna make two seconds to go back into idle. But by that point, it should be already under the sea and the player character shouldn't be able to see it. So let's try it one more time. Animation to play, one, compile, grabs, transitions back to a different animation, and it's being withdrawn under the C at this point. All right, put it back to zero, compile and save. So now we gotta go back over to our BP tentacle and hook up everything. So let's go back over to that. Make sure your tentacle mesh is selected here in animation mode, use animation blueprint, and let's choose our ABP underscore tentacle but we haven't chosen our mesh yet so let's select our mesh so tentacle tentacle redo three and you might say to yourself where's the tentacle so you gotta zoom out so make sure your camera is whatever speed you need to see it's it's like the empire state building yeah when ricardo was making this he was like are you sure you want it this big i'm like yes we need it this big and it's even worse than that because we need to change the scale of this to 2.7 2.7 2.7 so now it's really the Empire State Building. So compile and save that. And the last thing we're gonna set up here on event graph, on event begin play, we need to get a reference to our animation blueprint, this right here. So we're gonna take our tentacle mesh component. You can just drag it in from up here or down here. Get that. We're gonna get the anim instance of it. Get animation instance, this one right here. And from here, we're gonna cast to our ABP tentacle that we just created, cast to ABP tentacle connect event begin play up here. And actually we can delete these two down here. And then as ABP tentacle, we can right click and promote that to a variable. And that's gonna be our reference to the animation blueprint. But I'm just gonna rename this. I'm gonna call it tentacle ABP reference. Compile and save. So we are all set for this episode at least. So we can close out of ABP tentacle also. And let's actually place the tentacle blueprint in the world. Let's move it to about here and rotate it so that the suction cups are away from the island, right about there, 90 degrees. And what we can do, if we go back to the content drawer, back to ABP tentacle, I'm just gonna change the default value to one. And then it should be looping that first animation, but we have to simulate. So how's that? Pretty good start. Just a fair warning, guys. The next episode, it's going to be far more intense, blueprint intense. So that concludes our episode for today. And in our next episode, well, you can run, you can hide. 
but there's no escape. So I hope to see you there.